The following is a presentation of TFNN. We're going to go to Tom in Colorado, who has been good enough to hold. Tom, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. Good morning, Steve. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. Good to hear your voice. Yeah, you are Mr. Happy, I'll tell you. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thanks hey, Steve, I, I've been listening to the station for over a few years now. Yes. And I'm a first-time caller to your show. And I'll tell you, I love the way you break down the charts explain things, your patience with the callers, the way you articulate the Fibonacci's and what have you. I, I think you do a great job. You're a great addition to this uh, news network. Well, thank you very much. We really appreciate that. Really do. Yeah. I can change. Let's go to a Dave in Boston. Hey, Dave, what's happening? Hey, uh, real quick, Steve, i got to tell you, man, you saved me yesterday because I had covered my short positions when I saw that mini rally and then they tanked the market. And I didn't know whether to reshort at the close. And then when I got your video update, you totally gave me a game plan. And boy, did it work out. Oh, that's great. Uh, kudos. That's great. Kudos, man. You were right on that. Thank and, you. Uh, Thank you. And even after it came out last night, they reported that uh, they had failed and then the, the futures came down. That's right. And then they went up again. So, that's man, right. you were right on that. Uh, Our first caller, let's go to Susan in Boca Raton. Susan, thanks for calling. I just have to say one thing. I just recently subscribed to your Mastering Probabilities. Oh, thank you. You have put so much time and effort in it, and it shows. It is now time for The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. And all you wonderful money masters and treasure hunters, welcome to the August 7th, wonderful Wednesday edition of today's opening bell on the Trader's Edge. I'm your host, Steve Rhodes, and I absolutely treasure your presence here today. My outcome, as always, is to help you to become a better money master and to provide you with tools that each of us need in order to lead an inspired life. Because leading an inspired life, folks, that truly is what it's all about. So let's go look at one of our tools. This is the tool I call Progress Requires Change. You know, with every ending, there is a new beginning. And therefore, progress requires change. Most of us celebrate change, but once a year. Yep, on New Year's Eve. Now, shouldn't every day be a day for a new beginning? Hmm something to think about it most certainly is when we take a look at the stock market yes folks progress requires change and we should look at the universe from the viewpoint that everything is alive and growing everything is in a joyous motion new combinations new combinations appear in front of us all the time especially if you trade patterns in these stock markets new opportunities they exist all the time and it's the interactions with people those are the ones that actually really touch our soul. Yes, new opportunities spring up around us each moment of every day. And if, like myself, if you're an adventurer, well, the time is now to begin your next adventure. You know, for time, it does not stand still. And the one certainty in life, there's one certainty that I can give you, for those of you that like certainty, and that is that change is the one constant in life. How about that? Change is constant. And everyone likes change, don't they? Of course not. You only like the changes that you want, not necessarily the ones that you get out there. You know, think about it like this. When a seed falls or is planted in the darkness of the earth, the seed's outer shell must break so that it can emerge as a new life form. We can and we should learn from that seed. Breaking the shell, yes, absolutely, that can be painful, just as when we move from the known to the unknown. Yes, in one sense, we're losing something, that shell, but what we are gaining, we are gaining, we are growing, 
growth just around the corner. Think about that. Gain and growth. Can it get more exciting than that? I don't think so. Because if you're not growing, what happens? That's right. You're not living. Embrace change because progress requires change. Eliminate the phrase that that this is not the time for change because that's like saying this is not the time for maybe a new blessing to come on into your life. Growth, folks, growth is a must. Both, not both, but well, physically, mentally, and spiritually. The time, the time is now to break your shell. Face adversity with courage. Brace adversity, and it'll be a rich educational gift. Adversity, it's really nothing more than one of our milestones. Find it in your heart to welcome change. Pythagoras, he once wrote, no man is free who cannot command himself. Action and reaction, ebb and flow, trial and error. Progress, folks, it requires change. I think I think that, well, I don't, you know, each day, what I can say is that I can thank each of you for allowing me to make extraordinary progress, for allowing each of us to better understand the ebb and flow of the markets. You know, knowing where something is at is one thing, but understanding where something is likely to go, to me, that's like being able to see into the future. Yes, folks, guess what? We are not prisoners of our past. We are pioneers of the future. So let's go check out the ebb and flow of these markets here. Right now, we've got the Dow Futures trading down 56 points out at 15,418. S&P off about 6 at 1688. Russell 2000 down about uh, 2 points at 1048.80. You've got the NASDAQ Futures off about 5.5 at 3112. King dollar back 7 ticks right now. Uh, Not so much movement here in the uh, euro. We do have movement in the uh, pound, most certainly, as well as the uh, yen. Uh, we'll take a look at those currency pairs. Gold is back about ninety right now. Let's trade at twelve eighty. Yeah, light su- uh, light sweet crude is off fifty three cents, trading at one hundred four seventy seven. Silver down fourteen pennies at nineteen thirty eight. Our call in number is 877-927-6648. If you give me a call, we'll certainly take a look at uh, your stock chart over around the uh, world. Let's take a look at what's going on across the pond to the... uh to the east of us here, and that's over in Europe. We've got the uh, DAX is uh, down 32 points, only about four tenths of a percent right now. FTSE off about 60 points, 58.7. That's off nine tenths of a percent. Oh my goodness, a little bloodbath over in Asia last night. The Nikkei pounded down 576 points. That was off four full percentage points. The Hang Seng off one and a half uh, percent, down 334. And the Shanghai off seven tenths of a percent, off about 14 points. Let's start off by taking a look at what's going on on a little bit larger time frame out here. Let's look at the daily chart for the ES Mini. That's where we're going to begin our day. If you are listening on the radio or your mobile device at tfnn.mobi, thank you so much for doing that. Remember, the live stream of this can be obtained on that smartphone device. Just go to the homepage of tfnn.com. Over on the upper right-hand side, you'll see that button. Three little smartphone-type devices in there. Click on that. The show will stream live, and you can always get the replay on Channel 9, on Tiger TV in the archives. 1685.75, that's that May 22nd swing point high out there. We know the markets got over. We know the S&P. We know the ES Mini got over that on lighter volume. Now what we're, we're going to see is whether or not price is going to get back inside it. So the key number to be watching today, 1685.75. We were watching that yesterday. Did not get that. Today, in intraday trading, early this morning, I don't know, about 4, 4.30, something like that, we did see a touch of the 1685.75. Actually got down to a low of 1685.25. So, so far, what we have is a test of that area. Close back above 1685.75. What does that say? Well, if it's on lighter volume, which most likely it will be, it says you've got a rejection of a swing point on lighter volume. What does that set up? Well, that could set up another move to test the highs or at least a retracement of it. But 1685.75, that's the number on the daily chart that you want to be watching. That's on the S&P 500. Let's go check in on those 30 stocks out there. That would be the Dow. The Dow crushing through that May 22nd level. Not exactly crushing through with volume, but crushing through it from a price standpoint. As we take a look at the futures, that May 22nd high, 15.5 523 right now traveling out at 15417 that is back in the lower part of its range that brings up that high volume June 24th area as its potential target out there so we're certainly've got a little bit of divergence here the S&P closes back under it and then we've got two indexes or two of the futures contracts that would be pointing to lower 
price out there. So that's what we're watching on those two uh, puppies out here. If we go take a look at the NASDAQ futures, well, it's got a ways to go before it gets down into that May 22nd level. That's 30.53.50 from May 22nd right now. It's traveling out at 31.12.50 out here. We did get a, a reversal. Nice little uh, evening star formation, candle formation. That's a three-day candle formation that is bearish. That says that you've got some very strong resistance up at that August 5th high, 31.40.25, which was also the completion of the 1 to 1 A to B equals C D up. So we'll see how today progresses. You'd like to see some follow through today, meaning a move to the downside from the bearish side. If you're a bull, you'd like to see this uh, move. You'd like to see a rejection of this area. You'd like to see part of yesterday's candle get dismantled. That would mean a close of somewhere around 31 and a quarter or so higher to potentially start uh, taking away from that uh, uh, evening star pattern inside the NASDAQ futures. Inside the Russell 2000 uh, futures contract here as we take a look at the daily. That had formed the three drive to a, a top pattern. And a nice little bear sash uh, candle yesterday. But key here is going to be getting through August 1st. That August 1st candle is very important, at least a very important here inside the Russell 2000. The low of that is 1043.80 or 1048.60 or so. That level has not been tested yet, but that'll be the next key. So any of you that are short in the IWM, the Russell 2000, you want to see the futures contract get below 1043.80 and stay below that area. Uh, again, this three drive to a top pattern. That is a, a significant reversal pattern, just as it's a significant reversal pattern. If, in fact, this fails, it'll tell you substantial momentum to the upside. So that is on the daily chart. Now let's go peek down into the uh, shorter-term time frames. Let's go take a look at the 120-minute chart of the ES Mini. And what we see out here is that price is very close to testing that 200-period exponential moving average. Last time down there was at 11:30 on May. I'm sorry, on July the uh, 5th out there when it got down to 16. .0 eight and a, and a quarter that held as a support level the market just simply took off from there going from the 1608 to the 1704 that was basically a hundred points out there nearly a hundred points out there the top in that came in so far on uh, what about 415 in the afternoon on August the uh, second out there so this 200 period which it has not touched yet right now that 200 period exponential moving average measured out at about 1684 and uh, 1684 is what we're going to call it. Right now you're traveling at 1687.25. The uh, e, You can see on the 120-minute chart here, if you take a look at if you are watching us on Tiger TV, the red squiggly line down towards the uh, middle bottom uh, 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 panel inside my screen, that's that 14-period relative strength, relative weakness indicator. We can see that price is in the oversold condition. Now, if I go ahead, I'm going to scrunch this uh, chart. Scrunching, you know, is a uh, is a uh, technical term that us traders like to use and as I scrunch this chart you can see every time that the RSI gets down to this level we have seen some kind of bounce 877-927-6648 we'll be right back folks who says you can't take it with you TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors.
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesamento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar the Forex market, and more. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind. And get the edge you've been looking for. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Steve takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, let's take a look at some of the things that are popping and uh, dropping here in the uh, pre-market uh, out with uh, numbers. Ralph Loren, RL, is the uh, ticker symbol. They generated $181 million in net income versus 193 so off a bit there. Uh, their net revenue was up uh, 4% to $1.7 billion out here. Let's go take a look at what it is doing. It's trading down 7% this morning, off 13 bucks and change. It closed out at $189.51. It is, uh, you know, Yesterday we took a look at, I think it was Abercrombie and Fitch, uh, a couple of others uh, that were out there that were getting hammered, and uh, Ralph Lauren following suit as well. So the last trade here, firing off inside Ralph Lauren, is at uh, 175.90. So let's see where 175.90 is going to take us down to. It's going to be below the uh, July 26th uh, swing point, so it's going to, uh, looks like it's going to uh, gap below uh, that area. Uh, volume there was only 500000 shares made a uh, move yesterday with 881,000 uh, as far as the uh, June 24th swing point because that's what I would be asking where is that that's down at the price level of 165.73 now what is also just below that June 24th swing point that's where this is going to head to happens to be the last the most recent breakout so that should be an area that should hold as support now really depends on the volume coming out of the uh, uh, tires on this thing on the way down here uh, if in fact it can hold 
hold the price level, that would be 165.15 ish. That's actually the top of the February 5th uh, uh, breakout session. If it can do that on uh, less than 3.7 million shares, and we won't see any damage here, and in fact, it uh, could potentially provide you with a uh, buying opportunity. Not here right now today, uh, because uh, I don't know that it's going to get down there. It's going to first take out the uh, swing point from July 26. If you get it closed below 177.51, that's what sets up the uh, next area for this um, to move to, and that is on Ralph Lauren. So far, at least at this stage, the uh, chart itself looks uh, pretty uh, good out here, uh, but we'll just have to see what kind of volume comes out of the uh, tires uh, this morning here. That is on uh, Ralph Lauren. Here is, in fact, ANF. I believe that's Abercrombie and Fitch yesterday. The way that this uh, uh, handled itself, uh, not really too bad, because this thing, uh, we'd had, we, we know we had volume during the first hour of trading or so. Yesterday, ended up with uh, three and a half million shares to the uh, downside, and it was taking on that June, uh, July 26 swing point, just like Ralph Lauren is going to be doing, and it held. Now, that had 1.2 million shares, so it took that on with some volume. It should get down there and test it, but in the case of Abercrombie and Fitch out here, this also has a very nice breakout. This one goes back to November 14, 2012, and the top of that is 40, uh, 42 bucks out there, so uh, price coming back and testing that, if it were to do that, that might set up a, a nice potential buying opportunity if you are looking to get into that uh, retail uh apparel sector out here. We had Disney out with the earnings. They are down about uh, 2% here this morning, a little over 2%. Last trade fired off at 65.47. DIS is the uh, ticker symbol. So let's go see what that is going to uh, trade into. It uh, closed out the session last evening at 67.05. The most recent swing point low is 64.10 from July 30. So it's holding that area. So we're not seeing a, a ton of damage here just yet. If there is some damage, if there is some volume off of the uh, top here, that spells trouble for uh, Disney. That would bring into play the February 6th high volume candle, 26 million shares there, and that price is 55.50. So one thing at a time. But that is if Disney were to fall out of bed, if we were to see substantial selling inside Disney, 55.50 would be the uh, likely target out there. No, 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 don't be shorting this or anything. It has not broken a swing point yet to the downside with volume or anything. Uh, just simply that is the way that it is uh, trading. If we take a look at uh, Marathon Oil, MRO is the uh, ticker symbol. That's off 7% here this morning. Let me see if I've got that on my uh, screen here. Of course I don't, but we'll go ahead and put it up here. MRO, let's go see what that is uh, trading in, not NRO, MRO. Maybe we'll come back and take a look at MRO as well, or NRO, but M as in Mary, MRO, Marathon. Uh, that is uh, gapping down this morning, 7.5%. Uh, Last trade far enough at 34 bucks and change. That's going to take you right to June 24. So June 24th is going to be the number inside the Marathon Oil. Volume there is 6.6 .6 million shares. If that area fails, uh, we'll see a, a move down into about the uh, 3096 level, which will take you all the way back down to April 22nd. I don't know uh, what the weighting structure of Marathon Oil is inside the uh, DIG, the DUG, the energy sector out there. I don't suspect it's a uh, substantial one. Let's see, also uh, getting hammered here this morning, First Solar, FSLR. They are trading down about 10% here this morning. Uh, that uh, last trade inside First Solar fired off at 42 and a quarter. 42 and a quarter is going to take you below June 21st out there. That says First Solar headed to about the $37 range. Last time we saw any volume with wide price spread, April the 9th. 877-927-6648. We'll be right back, folks. Does the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. 
or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. With the stock market flirting with all-time highs and volatility back, now is the perfect time for a two-week free trial to Market Insights. On Monday, June 24th, Tom O'Brien closed out all five open positions in his daily newsletter, Market Insights, with all trades being profitable and ranging from a 2.23% gain all the way to more than an 11% gain in just one position for an incredible 32.7% profit combined between the five trades. Let Tom O'Brien's years of market experience work for you. If you'd like to see for yourself what kind of trading newsletter Tom O'Brien delivers to his clients each morning, then now is a perfect time to sign up for a two-week free trial to his daily newsletter, Market Insights. In a volatile market like we currently have, the potential for fast market moves like we've seen recently is a trader's dream. So don't wait any longer. Sign up for your two-week free trial to Market Insights today at the front page of TFNN.com. With over three decades of commodity trading experience, Andy Hecht has developed a system that combines both technicals and fundamentals. He calls this approach Technomental, and now you can put it to work for yourself with his brand new service, the Technomental Commodity Report. In this weekly newsletter, which comes out each Thursday morning, Andy gives you his analysis of the market price direction bias using fundamentals, and then specific trade recommendations, including entry and exit points using technicals. The recommendations in the newsletter are always based on stocks and ETFs, so a futures account is not required, and Andy will often use options in the recommendations as well. Andy will tell you where to get in, where to get out, and he'll outline the risk-reward profile for all recommendations. To get your month-long free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report by Andy Hecht while locking in the low introductory rate, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. To the races, we got the Dow off 67 points, trade out at 15.451, S&P down seven, trade at 16.89, composite off 11 points at 36.54, Russell 2000 down four at 10.48, Google off 99 cents, Apple back a buck 77, Microsoft off four ticks, Intel down nine, Cisco up 19 pennies, up three quarters of a percent this morning. To the upside, EOG Resources up about four and a half percent, up six dollars and seventy. Eight cents. Well Care, Health Point, uh, WCG up eight percent, up four eighty two. Finisar Corp, FNSR up a nice seventeen percent here this morning, up uh, three dollars and change. Tournier, NVTRNX up seventeen percent, up two ninety. Santorus. SNTS up 9% here this morning, up 223. Computer Sciences, CSC up 3.5%. Mead Johnson, MJN is the uh, ticker symbol. They're having a nice morning, up a couple of uh, percent. AOL up 4% here this morning. Pixelworks must be a buyout or something out here. PXLW. That is up uh, 44%. Uh, Pixelworks net loss. I'm just seeing numbers out here. We'll go take a look. What did they announce here? Let's see what kind of announcement do we have. Uh, 
just an earnings release. Very interesting. So that stock chart is up 42%. That's assuming that my machine here is uh, giving me the right uh, numbers. Uh, let's see, to the uh, downside, leading the charge, the downside, Ralph the rent up, 12 bucks and change right now, trading at 177.29, 6.5% to the downside. Zillow, Zillow was up uh, just a couple of days ago. That is now down 8% off 7 bucks and change for solar off 555. That's down about 12%. YRC Worldwide having a bad morning, down 20%. Percent and change off 579. Fossil Group having another tough morning out here off about 3%. CHRW, CH Robinson Worldwide off 6%. Gulfport Energy down 5.5%. Demand Wear, DWRE off 6%. Calumet Specialty, CLMT, that is off 9% this morning. Davida Healthcare off uh, 2% as well. Disney down 3.5% off 238. Solar City down 4%. Marathon Oil off off about six down two eighteen. Our call in number is eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Let's go out to Atlanta to uh, Nabil. Nabil, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you this morning? Good. How about you, Steve? I am doing excellent. Thanks so much for for asking. You wanted to take a look at uh, Apple, I believe. Uh, tell me what you're doing. How I can best be of help to you? I'm I'm just wondering at this point. Uh, I have some shares. I mean. And I know it broke the swing point of about 465, uh, but it was probably light volume. Do you see that uh, sh should uh, hold it or should I, you know, uh, set it basically at this point because it might go back to the lows again? Uh, first, first question would be: When you got into the trade, was it, or you got into the investment? Is it for a? What's the time frame? Are you look? Is this a trade, an investment? Is it a longer term? You know, give me your horizon, then I can I can better perhaps answer the question too. It was more like of uh, investment that if I can always get at lower prices, I mean, I'd rather do that. Okay, so if we take a look at Apple, you know you've had a uh, you've had a nice run. It did give you the confirmed A to B equals C D up. I don't know when you got into it, uh, but it did uh, to the upside here. Uh, July eighteenth was the uh, swing point high, four thirty four eighty seven. Did seven point eight million shares. Gapped up through that area with twenty one million shares on July twenty fourth. So that was nice. Now the retracement that it had coming from the uh, lows of June twenty eighth all the way up to that high on July eighteenth, very minimal. Uh, looks like even less than a point. 382 retracement. And what that does say uh, is that uh, this should do more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD up. So that would say that it has a little bit more uh, room to the uh, upside. But, be, but what we have to do, you know, and, and you pegged it. Now, yesterday's candle was nothing more than a uh, than an inside day. Uh, in fact, if I take a look at the low of August 5th, I just want to check that this out for you, Nabil. The low is 462.15, and yesterday it got to 462.17. So it wasn't a key reversal day. No reversal session at all inside of uh, Apple yesterday. So now you got to start dealing with some kind of a reward to risk. Now, on your, uh, do, do you use uh, stock charts or anything like that? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Okay, so one of the things I would put on there would be the 200-day exponential moving average, because today might be the day that gives you that information about what uh, about what Apple might do. If if you were to ask me, hey, what do I expect to see in the market? I expect to see a bounce. So I expect to see I expected to see a push to the doors early this morning between 9:30 and 10:30. I don't know if that pushes over, you know, just like uh, when they open up for uh, Black uh, Friday or what have you after Thanksgiving. So I expect to see a push for the doors, and I expect to see a bounce in the marketplace. A pretty decent bounce, so we'll see if that uh, comes uh, to fruition. If, in fact, that's the case, you really want to be paying attention to, in my opinion, the 200 period exponential moving average, because right now that could be a real resistance point. Last time that Apple was above that area, uh, Nabil, and it was just for a short period of time, was back in uh, the uh, end of, uh, speaking of uh, Thanksgiving, was back in the end of November, November 26, 27, 28th, or what have you. But basically it has been below the 200 period exponential moving average since early November. So, you know, why that may act as a, a resistance a point, I don't really know, but it's something for you to watch right now. That 200 period is 468 and a quarter. No reason to bail just yet. What you want to see from the long side, especially if we do get a, a market bounce here, is you want to see this get above that level. It's going to change and rotate a little bit, but right around 468 and a quarter or so. Now, 
if it does get above that area, what you do have to contend with is this uh, gap down, the big gap down with volume on January 24th. So probably this would be just coming back to a breakdown area if it got up to 504.77, which is quite a bit. You know, it's another 40 bucks from where you're at right now. So I think that when you're taking a look at reward to risk, You've got to be taking a look at, I think your potential reward here would be the 504.77, but only if it gets above that 200 period exponential moving average. I can tell you that on the A to B equals CD side of it, it should have the ability to do that the way that uh, we saw a shallow retracement and uh, the volume when it got past that uh, B point. Uh, you mentioned, uh, you know, it took out a, a swing point uh, yesterday. If we take a look at May 7th, that had 17 million shares. It got over it with 11.8. So absolutely you're right. It's it's over a set of swing points with lighter volume. So, you know, as a pilot, this is where you're getting in a, a turbulent zone, where you've got to have that turbulent fasten your seatbelt on. Uh, will this have uh, will this have a lower price? Most likely it will. Where is it going to begin the uh, turn back? Not certain. I mean, the bears will certainly show you, but we didn't get a bearish candle yesterday if you were going to use that as one of your signals. What we did get is Apple got up into the over bought condition utilizing the 14 uh, period relative strength relative weakness indicator so simply a move sideways from here to work off that condition would actually be bullish in the case of uh, apple out there so that's what it looks like on the daily chart uh you know if you've got a nice profit in it one thing that you could do from this point would be to uh because you're trying to build a long-term position is take your principal off the table take your principal off the table let these remaining shares maybe uh, go ahead and fly uh maybe that just as part of your portfolio for some reason you're trying to build a position inside Apple and then you've got a free trade. You know, there's nothing better than that. Um, you know, those would be the those would be the different decisions that I would be making. But what questions do I do you have from what I just posed to you out there? Or, or something else that you might be looking at that I just simply overlooked in a you know in a three minute analysis of the stock? No, I mean you answer all the question. I mean it's it's quite clear that I really appreciate well, thank you. I appreciate I appreciate that as uh, as well here. So a sideways move is bullish, that's for sure. And uh, uh, if uh, you have any other questions, just give me a call back. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Okay, you t you you do as well. Now I mentioned uh, to Nabil that uh, you know my interpretation right now of what the market is telling us is that you know it wants to actually uh, bounce. Uh, whether that's going to start here at nine forty three or ten thirty or what have you, uh, let's go take a look at some of the reasons why in the uh, marketplace. Number one, let's go take a look at what's going on inside the uh, currency market. As you know, my favorite friend and yours should be this currency pair here. So we got to keep a close eye on this. This is the euro, Japanese yen, which completed a perfect. Folks, I do mean perfect. A to B equals CD down the A point on this. And this was after uh, creating a .786 Gartley cell pattern. The A point, July 24th, high 132.72. Your B point on this is the swing point from... On July 31st, 129.32. Makes a, looks like a 0 .786, 0 .618 retracement into August 2nd, that high out there, 131.94. That was your C point. One to one, A to B, equal CD, 128.54. You'll get a kick out of this. It actually hit this morning, 128.54. I mean, how do you like that, folks? Now, what uh, is key, though, is it hit that D point with a wide-ranging bar. Not exactly what you like to see if you were the one that was the buying or selling D points out there. So it says you've got to go down into the intraday charts to see what's going on inside of the Euro-Japanese yen. But this has completed a A, uh, a to B equals CD, uh, the .618 retracement level of that entire Gartley sell pattern. It's a bit lower, and I do suspect we are going to see this currency pair move down there. So when I say a bounce. I didn't say a reversal in the marketplace. I said a bounce in the uh, marketplace. What I would see unfolding today to give you the opportunity to actually come to the short side of the uh, market. But 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 this bar here and coming into this says. You know, hey, Steve-O's reading could be a little bit suspect here. So I know what it is that I'm looking for. But knowing that we completed that pattern, and now we're going to go take a look at a more intraday uh, chart here to see what we have going on inside the Euro-Japanese yen. Now we're going to come take a look at that 30-minute chart out here. The 30-minute chart is showing that same A to B equals CD down. 
We did have a nice reversal session right here. So that area, that 128.54 on the intraday charts, it also had a nice little reversal candle-wise. And, of course, on the 30-minute chart, you can see it was what? It was very oversold. So you would have expected a move, whether that move was sideways or a bounce higher. What we saw inside this currency pair was a bounce higher with a nice wide-ranging bar on the 30-minute chart. Very nice bullish engulfing effect, a, a morning star reversal pattern out here. That says that 128. 54 is very key support. So if we see on a 30-minute bar, if we see a close below that, then guess what? Then that bounce that Steve-O was expecting becomes very, very, did I say very? It becomes very suspect because the direction of the Euro-Japanese yen is what will point to the direction, not necessarily the movement price-wise, but the direction that we should expect inside the market. As well, if this area here holds, then what we'll see is a bounce. Where is it going to bounce to? Well, it's going to bounce right into the C to D line. That C to D uh, move down here, uh, at least the uh, angle that I've got, is actually an area of resistance. So should this in fact bounce, what you'd want to be taking a look at to the extent that you can put up an A to B equals C D and make sure that you're using the exact same angle. It's a 30 minute chart from the swing point high to the swing point low out here. That becomes your first area of resistance. You get a move above that. Then you can start taking a look at your retracement uh, levels. You can take a look at just on the C to D leg. It would say you could take a look at a, a bounce to at least a 130.66 out there. Uh, what you'd really be taking a look at is your A to D lag to take a look at your retracement levels. And the dead cat bounce would take you up into about 130.4 point fourteen out there. So one thing at a time, but it is this currency pair here, both on the daily and the intraday, that is going to uh, go ahead and give us a, a decent signal with regard to the market. Now, there are plenty of other things inside the 30-minute futures contracts out there. And if you'd really like to understand how those things work, uh, just go check out my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. Scott, you can try it risk-free, 30 days. You know, how would you like to get a, a newsletter, 8 o'clock in the morning, market's moving down, and it goes through and it tells you, Hey, here's what I believe the market is going to do. It lays out exactly the reasons why. Would that have helped you in your trading? That's what you've got to make a determination of. And if you think that it would, go check out the newsletter services because it's more than just the currency pair in being able to uh, put this together. But as long as we're talking currencies here, uh, let's, in fact, go take a look at the other currency pairs, see what we've got going on out here. Let's take a look at the euro, U.S. dollar. Right now it is uh, trading relatively flat out at 133.06. It wants to move higher. Uh, this had uh, formed a 0 .786 uh, retracement here. No pattern on the uh, way up. I can tell you all the lagging indicators, the exponential moving averages, they're in line for a uh, bullish move here. The bearish candle, it basically has been reversed. It was overtaken in the uh, battle between the bulls and the bears. That was the August 1st candle. This was overtaken by the uh, bulls effectively at the close yesterday. This says it wants to make a uh, run, uh, you know, higher, whether it's to the actual high out here of its recent swing point, its most likely target, which is 1.3415. Neither overbought nor oversold, so it's got room to run to the upside. A, uh, if the uh, euro moves higher, the U.S. dollar index will move a, a bit lower. Maybe that helps out uh, Goldilocks. We'll go check in on Goldilocks here in a moment. Let's take a look at the Great British Pound U.S. dollar. That, as we had mentioned, looked like that was going to form an A to B equals C. Up, but we've got confirmation of it here so far this morning. So long as it closes above the uh, B point out here, the B point being July 25th, 1.544. So as the uh, pound gets stronger, the U.S. dollar index should get a little bit uh, weaker as well. The uh, first target is going to be 1.572. That is going to take us all the way back. That's your one to one A to B equals C D, and this has the potential, quite frankly, to do even more than that type of a uh, move out here. Uh, but the one to one is going to take you back into the June. June 17th, swing point out here. Set up a beautiful, did I say beautiful? I did. Set up a beautiful 0.618 Gartley sell pattern back on June 17th. That's the swing point that it is headed for, and that is your great British pound. I'll be right back, folks. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. 
Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position at Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page at TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program. The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report, which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks, as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the Gold Report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. Catch the Money Masters as they teach you the art of mastering money when it comes to trading and investing. Next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's off uh, 59 points right now. S&P is uh, down uh, 6. And uh, let's go to my favorite country that is just south of the border of uh, Detroit out there. Let's go to Windsor, Canada. Let's go to Anne in uh, Windsor. Anne, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you this morning? Suzanne. Suzanne. I apologize. Well, Suzanne, nope. how are you this morning? No problem. Um, oh, pretty good, thank you. I'm getting ready to go on a vacation to uh, uh, Europe, and uh, I was wondering uh, if you could tell me your uh, outlook on the uh, GDX. I want to put the stop in. Okay, I, so you're, you know, you're before in. Before I leave. 
You're you're in a trade on the GDX. Yes, but I have NUGT, so that's uh, you know hard to take when it's uh, <laughs> without a stop. So I want to put the stop in before I leave on vacation. Okay, okay, excellent. And you're going to put uh, both a uh, both a stop and an exit in as well uh, while you're on vacation. That way, if it hits a target, they uh, take you out of the market for a profit. Or are you looking at GDX as a real long term holding? Um. Oh, I never, I never done that um, uh, before. So uh... it's always nice to have them both in there when you place the trade. You know, the time that you are most objective in any trade uh, that you get into is uh, before you're actually in the trade. And I find that it's always easiest to go ahead and put both sides of the uh, trade in. You know, where your stop is going to be, the amount of pain that you're willing to uh, take, the amount of money that you're willing to risk, and when it meets your objective, when you're willing to exit and go ahead and uh, take more vacations and take that profit off of the uh, table here. So, I, you know, if it's a longer-term position, I don't know where you're in on this. No, shorter. I would prefer shorter. Uh -huh. Shorter, okay. You know, your your stop is... You, so... Uh, first, your, your minimum at a, at a, or the maximum. The maximum amount of, of pain that you should take on the GDX would be a, a close below twenty two twenty one. That is the that is the uh, June twenty sixth uh, low out there. If they're in right now, it's trading at uh, twenty four twenty five. Now you may not want to take that kind of pain, but oh. I will tell you that ultimately no. that is where you want to uh, be at. What you uh, and you leave for vacation when? Today. Today, okay. Um, you know, your next area that you would put it, I'd have to take, let me, let me see if I can pull up a, another screen for you here. Give me a moment to do this. What I'm going to take a look at is the average true range of the GDX, what it has been over the last uh, 10 days. And the average true range is from high to low what the GDX has been uh, trading at. And that basically becomes the daily noise. So what that is, Suzanne, is 98 cents. So right now, the low of the uh, trading session here is 23.89. You know, one one thing you might take a look at is putting your stop at twenty two eighty nine. Uh, you know, just to give it a little bit of movement, or take the high of today at twenty four thirty two and back that off by a buck and make it twenty three thirty two, something like that. But the normal movement of this equity here is at least ninety eight cents per day. Um, you know, I always like to have my stops outside of that. So that would be that would be my recommendation. Uh, twenty three fifty two is the next floor down. You know, it's trading into a high volume bar on light volume. That's the good news. But the bottom of that bar is twenty two forty six, and it sounded like you didn't want to potentially take that kind of uh, pain uh, if we were to travel down there. But that's you know, it's trading inside that bar. It can easily go test that uh, here. You're out of the woods on this if you see a uh, close, or you should be out of the woods on this if you see a close above twenty five oh two. Then that would actually look bear, uh, bullish to me. Twenty-five of two. If we see, oh, that's uh, yeah. If you if you see a close uh, above that, I don't know that that will happen today. And it doesn't have to happen today in order for me to be to, to get bullish on that. So I hope that helps you out. You should exit maybe about thirty dollars and a penny though at this stage. All right, Suzanne. Thirty dollars and a penny. Uh, yep. Thank you. Yep. Thank okay, you so much. Okay, and have a great Steve. vacation. I love listening to you. I listen to you uh, every chance I get. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, have a great Thank day. You. Have a great bye day, bye. folks. Thank you. What's the one thing that pulls people back from the breakthrough that they're moving towards? What's the only thing that really stops people from taking action? You and I both know the answer, and sure, we can come up with the reasons why we're not where we want to be, but the only reason that we don't do more with our life is fear. Or if you're an overachiever, call it stress. Simply put, there's something that happened to us in our past that's holding us back from the life we deserve, yet you and I are okay, we're here. So why should we let our past control our future? Exactly. We shouldn't. Hi. I'm Steve Rhodes with TFNN.com, and when it comes to your trading and investing, I can help you overcome your fear of loss. Together, we'll turn weakness into strength with a system I've developed called Mastering Probability. I'll teach you how to make your money work harder for you than you do for it. I'll teach you the tools that provide financial freedom. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com, click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and begin your journey of mastering probability risk-free. It's time to become a pioneer of your future versus a prisoner of your past.